Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome, I'm glad to have you. So this video is going to be the construction of a mixed wing uh, for a salmon fly. The next fly I tie is going to be a popham out of George Kelson's book and I want to try to get this recipe as close as I can and as close to his technique as possible. So for this video I'm going to go through and show you the feathers that I've selected for this and then the construction of the wing itself. Um, in my next video is when I'll be tying the fly and adding the wing to that fly. So uh, make sure your post notifications are on. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And for now, let's uh, get over to the table and I'll show you how we put it all together. Okay, so we're over here with all the materials. And as it's written in Kelson's book, the wings are made of golden pheasant tippet and tail, galena, parrot, light brown mottled turkey, red macaw, bustard, mallard, and a topping. Now, some of those materials are not going to be included in the construction of the wing, such as the golden pheasant tippet and the topping. Those are uh, obviously added before and after. Um, the tippet will go on before the wing does. So this is just the construction of the main part of the wing. Um, in the description also, parrot refers to uh, a green colored parrot. That I do not have. Uh, I do have this um, macaw tail that is somewhat mostly green in color and I'm kind of hoping that uh, that gives me the effect that I'm looking for. And the light brown mottled turkey, I do not have anything that's kind of close to that. So uh, I'm subbing that in with peacock wing which is very close in color and uh, in pattern as well. So I think that'll still look very nicely. Um, now we're going to start uh, with selection of the golden pheasant. Now, like I said in my married wing video, you want to pick right and left side. You're still constructing a wing. Um, but you'll notice that, um, you know, it's, uh, not, since it's not married together, um, we don't have to worry about how well they marry up. We just need the strands themselves and to have the uh, particular shape. So when you're looking at your, fe your feathers here, like these golden pheasants, um, you still want to pick your right and left side. So uh, this one here would be my right side or the, uh, the far side. And this one here will be my left. As you can see, this one is much longer on this side than it is on the opposite. And same here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select um, some barbs from right in here. The size of hook that I'm working with is about a 2.0, so I'm not going to need anything too terribly long. I don't need to get up into the longer stuff in the top. Um, I can stay down here towards the bottom and get some of these uh, shorter, shorter pieces. I need about 10 of each one of these. So, as we take them, we'll just set them aside. I chose to keep that uh, golden pheasant tail in its in its full tail um, just to preserve it. It it seems to hold its shape and um, doesn't get as roughed up as badly if I keep it all together. And we'll do the same with the peacock. Now I'm, the hook I'm using is a, it's about a 2.0, a smaller hook. So if you're, if you're curious if it's going to be too short, too long, 
Um, you can always take the hook itself and measure that up. And as you can see here, that's going to be plenty long. Do 10 of those. Same with the quarry buster. I don't have to take anything from the long, long part up here. I can start down here a little bit more. Measure twice, cut once. You know what they say? If you can see right in there, there's gonna there's a broken one right here. So I'm gonna take two out for that, two extra, just to compensate for that, just in case.
I don't always take the feather or the barbs from the same exact spot on the feather. I do where it's sensible and where the length of the barb is that I need. I know anybody that's got OCD about things being even. Well, this might might hurt you a little bit. Now, with the Galena, this was intended more as a side, the way uh, teal and wood duck would be. So with this, uh, these are much shorter fibers. And I may actually take both uh, from this one feather, left and right side. I'm do a little bit more than 10, just because they're they're a bit of a thinner um, barb. So let's do a snip. I'll mix that in, and then the wood duck, or excuse me, the mallard. Okay, so now we've got them all, got all our pieces selected out here. Now what we're going to do is we're we're going to take these apart and we're going to make bundles. We're not going to make it all one. We're not going to marry it all together. We're actually going to wind up making little bundles. I'll take these and start stripping them out. And here we've got nine, which that's that's fine. Um, in his book itself, it doesn't actually describe how many bundles or how many pieces of each. This is kind of a uh, sort of guessing game. For the most part, you want to line up each one of these in a descending order on the tip, ever so slightly. short one that I was in there. Okay. Anything extra that you've got you can set aside. Um, 
I've got a bin that I put them all in. They're all compartmented out for each different kind. So if, actually, if I want to make married wings, I usually go to that. Um, but in this case, I can actually show you how it all goes together. So this is a very slow process. Um, you guys may want to uh, skip ahead just a little bit, or maybe if you can speed up the video, fast forward. Um, that might not be a terribly bad idea. I think you can see how this is going here. Um, I'll see if I can find a, uh, a way to speed this up a little bit. I'm not very good with video editing, but I'm going to give it a shot. If it doesn't speed up, then I uh, didn't succeed at that, and I apologize for for that. But um, you know, this is the process that it takes to uh, create these salmon flies. These uh, these works of art, as many see them, which they they truly are. Uh, I have a great admiration and respect for all the men and women that uh, founded fly tying and and started all of this so many years ago. And as you can see these are starting to build into just as I just as we planned bundles. You want to keep all of these facing the same direction if you possibly can. You don't want them going in every which direction. So if they start to flip on you like this one you got to go back and correct that before you the next step I'll make that tent bundle since I've had everything. I'll just grab another piece of the. <clears throat> I'll just grab another piece of that uh, golden pheasant tail out of my box of spares. Put these in just a little bit shorter on some of those. When I say shorter, I'm referring to right here at the tip where we're lining things up. If you're lining up these tips, not these tips down here. These don't matter. The ones that matter the most are the tips up top. Oh, I skipped over one.
And again, Lena, we're going to tie in, we're going to lay that end down a little bit lower. And we're just going to do that in, I don't know, twos or twos and threes. So we'll set that down kind of about halfway in, halfway up the the bundle. And then we'll do the same thing with the mallard. That is also going to uh, just get kind of layered in there and put a little bit shorter, just the way a roof would be. Okay. Now we have all our bundle stacks made up. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take these and just kind of bunch them together. Get them all snug and touching. Make sure they're all facing the same direction. Oh. And if they come apart like that, that's okay. It's just gonna do the same thing that we're doing anyways. All right. Now we take our bundles. We're going to one at a time. Get them all put together like this. Take each bundle one at a time. Make 
make sure all the feathers in each one are all oriented the same. And then we're going to take them and slowly start stacking them. Now as we stack them, we want to stack them so that the tips are all in an angle just like you would do in a married wing. And if you have to line up a few more of these tips and kind of pull some things forward a little bit more, you can do that. And as you can see now, we're starting to form our mixed wing. Now, even though the galena is a little bit shorter than the rest, you want to make sure that it's still in position to be tied in correctly. And here we have one side of our mixed wing ready for our fly. And once tied in, that should uh, that should come packed out nicely, and that, that'll look great. And once also once that's tied in, you can brush out. And brush that out more. So there you have the mixed wing. 
I'm going to, uh, I won't bore you with the second one, but uh, I will be putting the second one together here momentarily and uh, I'll get to putting the fly together. So I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, like I said, make sure you know your post notifications are on. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. That's going to help me out. It'll uh, help me keep creating content for you guys. And uh, it lets me know that, you know, I'm doing a good job in, um, you know, giving you what it is that you like and uh, what it is that you want. If you guys have any suggestions uh, for flies that you'd like to see tied, by all means, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you want to see. I'd be happy to get to it. So until the next video, tight lines.